Welcome back to another episode of Courtside with Camden. I'm your host, Anna, and today we have with us a former wide receiver for Penn State who is currently awaiting his draft into the NFL. It is Jahan Dotson. Welcome to Courtside. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah, of course. So walk me through what a typical day in your life is looking like right now. Obviously, you're preparing for the draft, training every day, I'm assuming. Tell us what that looks like. Yeah, so uh, most of my days during the week, uh, I have three workouts a day. I start around uh, like 10 o'clock uh, with a little movement session, kind of get my speed right, working on like 40s and three cone drills and stuff like that. Um, then I get a little hour break and then we go right into position work, uh, just kind of getting a feel for running routes, what the NFL scouts are going to be looking for at the combine. And then I get a couple more hours and then I have uh, lifting around like three o'clock. So growing up, was there an NFL team that you were always rooting for or dreaming of one day playing for? Yeah, I've been a Cowboys fan. Uh, oh, literally, wow. <laughs> literally since birth. Uh, my mom was a Cowboys fan, so I've, I've been rooting for the Cowboys. It was sad to see them lose yesterday. It was a tough one, but it, I'm ex- I expected it. I'm sure that was a, a tough opinion to share around Penn State's campus, huh? Yeah, very tough. Uh, growing <laughs> up in the Philadelphia area, Philly fans are the worst fans, so it was or very the tough. Best. Or the best. <laughs> <laughs> But before there was NFL talk, Penn State football, a thousand people screaming, screaming your name, there was just John. Tell me about yourself outside of the game of football. Yeah, uh, I'm really chill kid. Uh, I'm very quiet. Uh, don't really say too much. Um, it's kind of really to myself. Uh, I, I like to spend time on myself, literally just playing video games. Uh, I chill with my friends all the time, but when I'm really to myself, listening to music, uh, like I said, playing video games, I, I'm really just a shy kid. Uh, don't say much, but that's pretty much it. If you were going to describe yourself in three words, and I'm guessing shy might be one of them, what would it be? Shy, competitor, and I say I'm funny. I think I'm funny. Yeah. Think you're funny? I think so. <laughs> think people would agree? <laughs> yeah, I think so. <laughs> so now you step into the, the world of football that you're in. Come to Penn State, 100,000 people every Saturday night, chanting Jahan Dotson, making catches, talking about NFL. When you look back at your time in the blue and white, what will you? What will be your most fond memories? Um, Just definitely, like, our locker room. That was, like, that was the biggest thing for me. Like, the that was the reason I came to Penn State. Like, the family atmosphere and the guys in the locker room coming together, that, that was just, like, what kept me going every day. Uh, those guys were pushing me to be – my best self every day and I was pushing them so it was it it was fun like when I look back at it now like I had trouble like when I first started at Penn State just getting used to everything I wasn't used to being around like a bunch of guys and stuff like that uh, because I come from a pretty small school but when I when I got there everyone just embraced me and that's that's really what I love about Penn State not only the guys in the locker room but the community as well like we we all talk with each other like it's just a fun atmosphere to be around. Who's the funniest guy uh, on the team? Funniest guy on the team? Aside from yourself. <laughs> Aside from myself. Um, that, that's a tough one. I got a couple guys up for debate. Um, I would say Aeneas Hawkins is one of them. Uh, PJ Mustafer. And I got to throw my guy Fred Hansard in there. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So obviously you mentioned Penn State community. Penn State fans are amazing. But like all college fan bases, wins and losses can greatly affect the mood of the fan base. What was it like playing for a crowd that could switch up so quickly when things weren't going Penn State's way? Right. Yeah, it's tough. Like I I've been through I've been on a couple teams where things were at an all time high and right next thing you know, like things are at an all time low. So like the community, honestly, you can always count on having ninety five thousand plus people in the stands every time we step into Beaver Stadium. So I, I was super thankful for that. And I uh, just kind of wanted to put on a show for them like, literally every time I was on the field. Like, I was doing it for them. They were paying money to come see me play. So I, I wanted to pretty much give them a show. It's, it's great having that support around uh, the Pennsylvania area. As I'm a Pennsylvania guy, like, I always had uh, family members coming up, people from my high school, um, just always supporting me. So I'm super thankful for that. Were there ever moments when – the pressure and opinions of other people really weighed on you mentally as an athlete? Um, I, I, I think that's one of the things that I kind of do well when I'm playing, I kind of just block out all the noise, uh, just kind of 
try to focus on myself, um, just block out what everyone's saying because everyone has their own opinion, whether it's bad, whether it's good. So uh, it's kind of blocking out those things because you can get caught up in those things if you're reading the wrong thing. So I'm um, just kind of focusing on myself, uh, just talking with the people that's closest to me, um, make sure I'm not keeping them tight. Yeah. I think the topic of mental health is so um, relevant right now in, in yeah. athletics, especially you see in the Olympics, like Simone Biles opting out, like it's just everywhere. And now the Big Ten just launched their mental health, mental health campaign. How do you think that things like that and the anxiety, performance anxiety, just being a point of conversation can help athletes in the future? Yeah, uh, that, that's a big topic to talk about just because like people don't realize that athletes go through a, a lot of things like on the regular uh, daily basis. Like uh, I struggled um, my sophomore year. I, I lost my grandmother. Like that was someone who was closest to me. And I felt like I was in a really dark hole, like in a really deep place. So uh, just keeping my family tight, like I said, and just talking to them, uh, making sure that I express like like I said, I'm a shy kid, so like expressing myself was was really hard. So talking to my family, talking to the ones closest to me, and make sure when I express my emotions and stuff, it it really lifts things off your chest. So um, I would really just say like talk things out. Uh, that that's my biggest thing. Uh, I had trouble with that, but get people that you can talk to on, at any point in the day, anytime, and just focus on those people. Yeah, great advice. John, you talk about being the shy kid, and I have to share the story. When when we first met, we were both speaking at Governor Wolf's visit to Penn State for <laughs> NIL. <laughs> and, I remember that. And you said to me, you said, yeah, I don't really like all this publicity stuff. I just want to play ball. Yeah. Um, but I think that really does speak to around campus. Like, you're known as such a normal guy for how successful yeah. you are on the field. You're very humble and grounded off the field. How do you remain grounded and humbled amidst all the attention and the fans that you get? Yeah. Um. I would say that's a testament to my mom. My mom's like, like I'm a spinning image of my mom. Uh, she she doesn't say much. Uh, very boy. shy. Mom, completely <laughs> a mama's boy. Uh, she she's just very shy, and that that's kind of like how I grew up. I was a very shy kid. Uh, didn't say much. I don't really feed into the the tension because then again, like I'm just like everyone else. Like I, I tie my shoes away. Everyone else ties their shoes. Ah, so like, John Morant quote, I see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so literally, I'm just a shy kid, regular kid. I like it. I like it. Talk to me about your relationship with your mom and how that's kind of inspired you to be the best you can be in the game of football. Yeah. Uh, growing up, my mom was literally doing everything for me, like from washing my clothes to this day. Uh, <laughs> literally, literally, I'm embarrassed to say that, but it's so true. Uh, she, when I was in high school, she would literally drive me across the country just to like put me in a better position to be successful in life. And like, literally, I, I owe it all to her. Like, that's literally my rock. Uh, that, that's my girl. Shout out to moms across the world. Yeah. My, mom, my mom personally doesn't wash my laundry still, but you do you. <laughs> <laughs> so post Penn State, you opt out of the bowl game. Was that a fairly easy decision for you to make or was that something you debated? Yeah, that was that was something I debated for a little while, uh, because when I when I was thinking about it, like I said, the biggest thing for me was the guys in the locker room and to know that I wasn't going to be able to share the field with them one last time. That was a really huge decision for me to make. And with their support, I was able to make a, a great decision and opt out of the bowl game. Uh, they were supporting me uh, literally through every decision I made. So uh, leaning on those guys and asking them, giving them telling them to give me feedback on what they think I should do. Uh, it really helped me make a sound decision. If you could relive one game at Penn State, what would it be? Relive one game. I would say the whiteout this past year when we played Auburn. Yeah. That was like one of the craziest, literally the craziest games that I've ever been a part of. Like the whiteout itself is insane, but like, when you get the win at the Whiteout, it's it's even crazier. Like that whole weekend, the town was just buzzing. It was it was just something you had to be a part of. Oh yeah, I think also the energy from it being the first Whiteout in two years was just. Yeah. I mean, everyone was so amped to be there. Like players, fans, coaches, like everyone. Recruits were like so excited. I know we hosted <laughs> a ton of recruits that weekend, so it was just like a packed with energy and excitement. So I'm not yeah. surprised that's your answer. <laughs> <laughs> 
So you've signed with an agent. Talk to me about the criteria um, that you were looking for picking an agency and what the interviewing process was like. Yeah, so uh, that, I would say the, the agent process is kind of like getting recruited into college again. Uh, like people are hitting you up, uh, wanting you to sign with them. Uh, and to be honest, like when you're picking an agent, the, the one thing that I made sure that I wanted to do is pick someone that I can trust and someone that I can relate to. And uh, shout out to my guy, uh, Ed Berry at CAA. He's, he's like family now. Like he, he preaches like everything that my family preaches. Um, he, he's just a great guy to be around. I trust him. So uh, taking it all the way with them and hopefully it's going to be a fun ride. What will your mindset be going into your rookie year in the NFL? Um, that's tough because like my mindset always going into each year is like always be better than the last. So being that this is my first year in the NFL, I kind of just want to make a splash. Uh, just kind of want to make every play possible. Uh, that's just the way I think. Like every time the ball's coming my way, I want to make a play. So um, just kind of making a splash for any team that I'm a part of. I'm going to be thankful for any organization I'm a part of. So I just can't wait. And, and you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to say every athlete getting drafted is just like, I don't care where I go. I'm so excited to go there. But if you <laughs> could pick, do you have somewhere that you would love to go? I got to say playing for the Dallas Cowboys would be pretty insane. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> uh, I was going to assume that, but <laughs> what's, what's the first thing that you're going to buy when you get that check? And let me say it better be for your mama. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, oh my gosh. I don't know. I might honestly move my parents wherever I am because I truly I rely that. on them. I rely on them so much. It's crazy. Like, my mom, like, when I say she does everything, she does literally everything for me. So. Like, how would you survive if she wasn't with you, basically? Yeah, I, I don't know how I've been surviving at school. I honestly <laughs> don't know. But she's been literally my rock. All right, well, I'm sure that your parents will be expecting that now that you've announced it to the world. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. ten, years, ten years down the road, where do you see yourself? Um, Ten years down the road, uh, hopefully... Super Bowl champion by then, hopefully. Okay, like, okay. Yeah. Manifest it. Manifest it. Got to talk it into existence. Um, hopefully, having a really solid career in the NFL, um, being able to take care of my family. That's that's pretty much why I do this, uh, just to take care of my family, um, and just create a better life for my family and my community and the people around me. All right, we are gonna wrap this up with a quick game of this or that. You guys know the rules. Are you ready, John? I am ready. Instagram or Twitter? Instagram. Dogs or cats? Dogs. Conditioning or weights? Oh. <laughs> oh, that's tough. Oh, conditioning, for sure. What? Yeah, for sure. Said no one ever. Oh, my Dude. God. Maybe, maybe a little maybe a little wide receiver, but whatever. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Cheeseburgers or tacos? Cheeseburgers. Early bird or night owl? Night Owl for sure. And TV shows or movies? Movies. What's your favorite movie? Favorite movie? Oh, that's tough. Um, all right. So I'm like really big on chick flicks. Like, okay. I love I, it. I, I've seen a lot. So uh, I'm going to go to chick flick. I'm going to say 50 first dates. Ah! Okay, uh, that would not have pecked that as a great movie, but I approve and I like it. I like it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Um, we wish you the best thank of luck in April. Me. Of course. And I will see everyone on the next episode of Fourth Time with Camden.